Hey everybody, good morning. Just thought I would mention the Stranahan report went out this morning as it goes out every single morning. Stranahan.com if you want to sign up for it. And by the way, citizenjournalismschool.com. Uh, we've opened the doors. After I get done with this, I'm going to have some breakfast. Then I'm going to work on lessons today. A bunch of new courses going up there. And you can affect them if you want to be part of Citizen Journalism School. Hey everybody, good morning. I'm going to let people come in. Do me a favor, blast this out. Let's get the other people smarter. Don't, don't keep all the smart to yourself here because I'm about to, to go off on a little riff that it will make you smarter. So let's just mention it to everybody. Hey everybody, good morning. Hey everybody saying hey. Um, and also, if you've not subscribed in Periscope, you really should because then you'll be notified whenever I do one of these bad boys. So <clears throat> if you read the Stranahan report, and even if you don't, if you look at the news at all, uh, people are going nuts. I might ask for 25000 Do you have it? By the way, I don't see it. Let me, let me point out something for anyone trying to troll me on this. I'm going to go back and go about it. There is nothing in the world wrong with me wanting to raise money to do films and other projects and podcasts and other projects to promote the political viewpoint that I have. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. When we're up against PBS, NPR, CNN, the Weinstein brothers, right? I could just go down the list of people who do documentaries, the Sundance Film Festival. Me trying to get 25 grand for a film is a joke. And for you to troll me about it shows your political bias, not mine. I am not going to apologize one second for trying to raise money. In fact, I'm actually now thinking I, what I really need to do is raise about half a million dollars to do a slate of films that I want to do. And by the way, that's nothing for doing a production company that would hire people, be a new business, bring jobs in, all that stuff, but also produce work about stuff like the truth about the Syrian refugee crisis, which I'm about to drop on you. I'm about to drop the truth on your head, right? For you to come in and try to troll me and say, oh, gee, why are you trying to get money? Do you have any idea what PBS's budget is? Do you have any idea what a drop in the bucket, the, even the amount, even half a million dollars, do you have any idea what a drop in the bucket that is to produce five or six films, which I have on, on my slate, to produce with that money, to produce multiple podcasts, well-produced podcasts that I have to do. So you coming in and trolling, all you're trying to do is you're a hater, and that's great. I like haters. Go ahead, be a hater. Like it. But all you're trying to do is criticize somebody. If you don't like my ideas, go out there and do something yourself. By the way, you'll have no problem getting funding for it because the left funds their lies. Now I'm going to go on and explain what the media is not telling you. And by the way, the media that I'm talking about that's not telling you this stuff has a thousand times the budget. When you look at aggregate, a thousand times the budget that I'm talking about. Okay? So by the way, don't don't troll. Oh, and one other thing, your mother. Now let's go on with this and make you smarter. So <clears throat> what's happening right now is the left is going nuts, right? The left is going nuts. Because Donald Trump is doing what I call extreme promise keeping, right? He had made uh, statements during the campaign, which the Trump haters all told you multiple times were never going to happen. He's never going to build the wall, right? You remember that? He's never going to build the wall, right? He's never going to do anything about refugees. This is all talk. It's all talk. It's all talk. Week one, bam, it's not all talk right? It's not all talk. He's doing it. In fact, the first refugees were already stopped. Let me just talk about that for a quick second. And let me give a shout out to my friend Michael Patrick Leahy, a great reporter and colleague of mine over at Breitbart News. Leahy pointed out, now why are people being stopped already? That's because knowing that the refugee temporary halt was coming, the departments that deal with refugees in this country on Wednesday, how many refugees, if you read Michael Patrick Leahy's stuff, I'll just ask it here. How many refugees came into this country on, on Wednesday? Anybody? Anybody know? Five hundred. Five hundred on Wednesday. Five hundred on Wednesday. Michael Patrick Leahy reported that. And by the way, I think five hundred on Tuesday as well. We, we let in, let's put the numbers in perspective, 85,000 
came in last year. 85,000 refugees came into the country last year. That's in the Stranahan report this morning. These are numbers, this is according to, I believe, NPR, who said it. 85,000 came in. Now, here's a question for you. How many of those refugees who came in were Syrian Christians? Anybody know that number? I said it last night on a periscope. I just want to see if anybody knows. Out of 85,000, how many were Syrian Christians? Eight. Eight is the number. Whoever got eight, you pegged it. Eight. Eight. Eight people. I'll put it like this. If I had all my kids together and me and my wife, that's eight people. <laughs> a small enough number that would fit in a minivan. That's, let me just point it out. 85,000, eight Christian refugees. And the Christian refugees aren't the ones blowing things up. Let me just point that out. The Christian refugees aren't the ones beheading people. So, let's, so the left is freaking out right now. And the left who has spent, uh, I'll put it like this. The left's whole message is shut your mouth. The left's whole message is shut your mouth. The left who has been actively trying to shut down people like Milo when he's out there speaking, right? Actively, violently shutting him down, or who punched Richard Spencer in the face. And again, I'm not a, like a fan or advocate of Richard Spencer, but that's what they say. When they mean shut their mouth, they mean boom, right? They mean clock him in the face, right? They freak out because Steve Bannon says shut up and listen. Well, if you're in the room trying to troll me, shut up and listen because this is important. I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to make you smarter about how the media lies to you because they do it in a very specific way that's predictable. You need to understand how they do it. One of the big techniques that they use is they simply do not give you both sides of the equation. They simply only point out one side and this is how they get away with saying, oh look, we're reporting the facts. This is the fact. They report one fact, they don't report another fact. So for instance, they talk about this refugee halt. They don't talk about the fact that Donald Trump, the mainstream media is not talking about the fact that Donald Trump has said he's going to help Christian refugees. I listened to NPR, BBC, and Fox News. None of them mentioned that, okay? So they can say factually that there's a halt coming. They can say that, right. But what they can't say is that He's actually going to help Christian refugees. And here's the other thing that they're leaving out, and this is super important. Saudi Arabia has not been taking in refugees. Now, they're going to attack Donald Trump. Let me ask you the question. CARE is getting ready to sue them. That's the Council on American Islamic Relations. That is a group that is designated as a terror group in other countries, by the way. CARE is designated as a terror group. CARE, who's become part of the institutional left, CARE was part of the March for Women. By the way, if you're part of the March for Women and you're an Islamic group, why don't you go look at your own countries? Why don't you go look at Muslim-majority countries and tell me what women's rights are there? Isn't, did anyone catch the Women's March in Saudi Arabia? Did I miss that? If there was a Women's March in Saudi Arabia, it would be a large black blob going down the street because everyone would be in burqas. That's what it would be, right? So, but the large black blob march doesn't have quite the ring to it. So these Muslim countries this is the other thing they leave out. Where's the women's march in the United Arab Emirates, in Qatar? Where's the, where's the women's march in any of these countries? I missed them. I don't see them, right? What you have with Democrats is you have a woman's march and then you had the marijuana march where people wanted to get stoned, right? And then in Saudi Arabia, you have women actually getting stoned, right? Not the fun stoned that makes them giggle and listen to Pink Floyd. No, no, no. This is people getting stoned to death. And where's the woman's march for that? Where was the mention of that by all the liberals, the half a million or million liberals that I saw in Washington, D.C.? Where did they mention that, or female genital mutilation, or even the ability not to drive, right? You want to talk about basic rights and freedoms about the way women are treated.
But Saudi Arabia, and this is important, and this is what else they leave out. This is what the mainstream media, when they report on Trump's ban, remember this, they won't tell you about Saudi Arabia's ban. They won't tell you that Saudi Arabia has not taken in Syrian refugees, and they won't tell you the reason why. Saudi Arabia is very clear about it. They're afraid that they're terrorists. Let's go back over this again. If this is xenophobic and anti-Islamic, then Saudi Arabia, the home of Medina and Mecca, the home of the Hajj, right? Then Saudi Arabia is the most Islamic, Islamophobic country on earth, right? If this is about Islamophobia, there is no more Islamophobic country than Saudi Arabia. And where is the CARE lawsuit against them? Where is CARE filing suit against the princes and sultans in Saudi Arabia. It's nowhere. It's nowhere because this is a one-sided attack on Donald Trump and America. That's what this is. That's what the media is doing for you. There you go. So remember, the, but I want you to understand the broad technique here. Get it. Get the broad technique here. The broad technique is to tell you one side of the story and not tell you the other side. So there you go. It's early. I'm already making you smarter, right? Do me a favor. Let me see a flurry of retweets as you as you send this out. Let's get other people smarter on this stuff as well. I'll now do the thing that I do. I will put on my glasses and I will look at the screen as things go by. And if people have cogent comments, I will comment them. And if people are trolly, I will poke them. But that's what I'm talking about this morning. Thanks for the retweets. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm the kind of guy who wants to build a wall to stop illegal immigration. What's your problem with that? Come on. What's your problem with that? Explain your problem with stopping illegal immigration into the country. The Saudis, for a long time, took in absolutely zero refugees. None. They took in zero refugees. Then they've started saying, oh, that they're taking in, in some, but no, not really. So look at, look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. CARE is the Council for uh, uh, American Islamic Relationships. What will you be doing in citizen journalism? Start your own publication. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> that's a good, that's a good, uh, it's American, by the way, CARE is American. Um, <clears throat> uh, I am planning after we get rolling a bit on citizen journalism school to have a group blog forum for students to be able to publish stuff on. Does that make sense? I plan on getting the equivalent of a student newspaper going where people, we won't have any rights to it, we won't pay anybody, but we won't stop anybody, and we'll have the citizen journalism school publication have a rotating set of editors. Does that make sense? Who are all going to be students, right? So we'll have a rotating set of editors. It could be daily almost to pick which stories get promoted to make, pick which stories are on the front. Does that make sense? So most of the countries uh, no Someone asked if I teach, and someone's suggesting I stop, I think. Saudi funds extremism more than anybody, but how I missed that. Somebody was asking a question. Saudis aren't banned. I, I, look, I agree. I think I personally think that Saudi Arabia needs to be on that list as well. But I'll, I'll take it. But however, let me point out something. There aren't that many refugees from Saudi Arabia. Because, uh, because we're treating Saudi Arabia as our ally, right? So wh you don't hear about Saudi Arabian refugees. There should be a lot. There should be a lot. The refugees don't have standing to sue, but CARE is going to claim that they do. And, and not all Saudis are rich, by the way. There's a huge amount of income inequality in Saudi Arabia. So there you go. No, Trump's going to get our servicemen and women killed. So you're doing what the mainstream media does. I'm going to talk to that troll for a second. Let's talk to that troll. As opposed to Obama, who didn't get any servicemen and women killed. You see, that's that the standard you want to use? You want to use that standard? 
Explain that. Were any servicemen and women killed under Obama? Were any civilians killed under Obama? What's been the rise of terrorism under President Obama? Do you want to talk about that? You don't want to talk about that, right? Again, this is the, this is the game. This is the game people play. So if you want to do that, if you want to apply a standard to one group, apply it to another group. If you want to say, but Donald Trump's policy is dangerous, you have to say as opposed to what? You have to explain as opposed to what? As opposed to Obama's successful policy of conciliation and pandering? So there you go. And, and by the way, Flint's drinking water problems are not, I mean, they were relatively... Well, see, here's the thing. So you say don't feed the trolls. Let me, let me respond to that. I look at comments. If I see comments, I, I respond to people. So one of the things is trolls, whatever you want to call them, deserve, in a sense, to be responded to. If somebody, let me, let me point this out. Let me just say this. Let me take a second to say this. And this is a bunch of people still in the room. Let me take a second to say this because you need to hear this. You need to hear this. Whoever you are, you need to hear this. You cannot let fear make decisions for you. You cannot let fear of people coming in and trolling you. Because listen to me, this is really important for you to understand. Do you know who is in politics that everybody likes consistently across the board? Everybody likes. Does anybody know who that is? Anybody? Nobody. That's the right answer. Nobody. There is absolutely nobody in politics who everybody likes. There are people who, who people like a lot and other people hate them a lot. There are people who this week are loving Trump and there are people this week who are hating Trump. And three weeks ago, there were people who were loving what Obama was doing and there were people who were hated what they're doing. And that's why I said to you, whoever you are, I want you to hear this. If you want to speak your mind about politics, if you want to get into the ring, you're going to have to get used to the fact that a lot of people are going to disagree with you and disagree with you adamantly. The only alternative is to not get into the ring, is to not to participate politically, is for you to not to express your views. And even if you disagree with me, I want you to express your views and I want you to get into the ring. I want you to carry on civil dialogue, right? And that means not spouting nonsense. The only people I pull the your mother stuff on are the people who go in and just spout nonsense. If people want to come in and just insult me, I'll insult you back. And I'll do it in the most childish, crude way I possibly can without really grossing out everybody, right? Just grossing people out a little bit, right? And that's what I do. That's my technique for that. When somebody comes in, if somebody comes in and they have a cogent argument for a progressive position, I don't go to the, your mother jokes. Never do. I never do that. But if somebody just comes in and goes, you work for Breitbart and you're stupid, all they deserve is the troll smackdown, right? All they deserve is, boom, your mother, your mother, your mother, because that's the level that they're operating at. Your stupid isn't a political argument. And by the way, the response to liberals, if you're a conservative, I bash people all the time. If you come, if you follow me consistently, you'll notice that when when conservatives come in and say all liberals are stupid, I say that's just an insult. Cut it out. Does that make sense? I'm real consistent about this point. Insults aren't an argument. But the thing I want to urge you to do is get in the ring. Get in the ring. Be part of the political process. Be part of the political dialogue. As Morrissey said, sing your life. Right. Right. In other words, if you have things to say, say them and then deal with the fact that you're always going to have trolls, period. Deal with that fact. It's just a fact of life. So it doesn't stress me and saying don't feed them. OK, sometimes I guess don't feed them. But if people are saying something, I respect people enough to respond to them. And if they're trying to make a cogent point, I'll respond to them cogently. And if they're not, I'll smack them around and we'll, we'll all have fun mocking them. That'll be fun, right? But if someone has a cogent, coherent point, let's, let's do that, right? But I'm, I'm real fair. I do it to people on the left and right. I don't like bad arguments. Anyway, so that's, so that's what I have to say on that. Does that make sense?
Yeah, so someone's talking about Roger Waters being an anti-Semite. I agree, Roger Waters' thing on Israel is completely offensive to me, and yet Pink Floyd is awesome. So what are you going to do about it? We live in a liberal culture, and if you just judge art by people's political views, you're hosed, because you won't have anything you'll like, right? They'll, they'd be like two groups I like. If I, if, I, if I look at my record collection, I probably don't agree with the politics of most people. I love The Clash. I love Elvis Costello. I love Springsteen, right? I love all kinds of groups who I don't agree with their politics. I'm not going to withdraw from the world and, and be a, a cultural eunuch. Figure that one out. Uh, I, I love art not based on the political opinions of the people who made it at that time. I love Pearl Jam. I can, I can name Jackson Brown. I love Jackson Brown. Late for the Sky era Jackson Brown, especially. So there you go. You don't do movies anymore. Well, congratulations for you. Now, try to wish them into a cornfield and see how that goes. Withdrawing from culture is one of the stupidest things the right has ever done, period. Right? Withdrawing from culture and being proud of it is the stupidest thing the conservatives have ever done. You need to embrace culture. And if you don't like the political message of music, make your own album. If you don't like the political message of movies, make your own movies. You dig? And the way to make your own movies is to watch people who are good movie makers. If you want to learn how to make documentaries, watch Michael Moore's films. Because he's a good filmmaker. In fact, there's very few conservative filmmakers you can watch making documentaries because there's so few of them because Republicans have this thing for a while that like I'll show them I'll withdraw from culture I won't watch movies you know uh, can I tell you something about movies they're fun to watch they're enjoyable and can I tell you something else about movies lots of people watch them can I tell you a third thing about movies if you want to learn to make movies watch movies I'll say it again if you want to learn to make movies watch movies you don't begin to uh, become a good filmmaker by like, I'm a great filmmaker because I never watched a movie. No. No, 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 no. No. So stop bragging about you withdrawing from culture. Embrace culture and then do better on it. It's the same thing I say. I'm an Apple fan. I'm a huge Apple fan. I don't like their politics. Guess what I'm doing? I'm using my iPad right now to do a message that Apple wouldn't agree with. This is the beautiful thing about freedom. You can use the tools of the left against them. Culture, use it against them. Technology, use it against them. I'm very gratified that Elon Musk now has Donald Trump's ear. I've been saying for a long time, people were like, oh, I hate Tesla. I hate Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a genius. Elon Musk is a genius. He's an innovative, forward-thinking thinker, and I'm glad he's coming around now and getting on the right side of the force, at least dealing with Trump. That's what he should be doing, and I'm glad to see it. And I'm glad I was saying months ago, Elon Musk is a genius, because he is. There's no reason to criticize everything somebody does just because you don't agree with their politics. In fact, I'll go further. That's really stupid. Cut it out. See what I'm saying? Cut it out. Stop doing that. You don't help anybody. You just, you, you just are not enriching yourself. Don't do that. Embrace culture. That's my, my message to the right. That's what I'm trying to do. Anyway. I didn't see anybody from the BBC. I, I saw Raheem Kassam comment on it. And Raheem. Yeah, I talked about the refugees already. I already did that. That was at the beginning. I talked about the refugees. Well, you're welcome. I'm not ridiculing you. I'm telling you to embrace culture. If you're going and saying it, sorry, I could pander to you. Oh, here, I'll make you feel better. I, I don't want to hurt your precious little feelings. Let me make you feel better. I think it's awesome you don't watch movies. Does that feel better? I'm not here to make you feel better, right? I'm here to give you smart advice. That's what I'm here to do. So it's not personal. You mentioned something. I'm pointing out that lots of people do it. If you want somebody to cater to your feelings, call your parents, or I assume you have a spouse of some kind. That's what they'll do, maybe, right? But that's not what I'm here to do. I'm suggesting you embrace culture. And I'm suggesting that you, I don't know who you are, I can't even see who, who said that, are part of, it's part of a larger problem. You're doing it 
because you're sort of encouraged to do it by people on the right. And I'm saying that's a bad move. That's all I'm saying. So it's not personal. Don't let me hurt your feelings by saying that. I really mean that. Don't let me hurt your feelings. I'm sorry if I did, I guess. But I don't know who you are. I'm, I'm seeing comments go by. I can't see who makes them. So it's not like I'm picking. I don't know if you're a guy or a girl. I don't know where you're from. I don't know whether you're a customer at Citizen Journalism School. I'm giving you the exact same advice I would give anybody. That's all I'm doing. Does that make sense? So again, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. That's not my goal. I'm making a wider point. You're saying something, so there you go. That's it. You're saying you don't like, you're, you're withdrawing from culture. I'm saying that's a bad idea. That's it. If I heard one of my kids say the same thing, I would say what I just said to you, to them. If I heard a friend of mine saying it, I would say what I'm saying to you, to them. I'm treating you like a friend. Does that make sense? This is tough love. That's what it is. If you want people to pander to you, I'm sure you can find them. That's not what I do here. Okay? Just not what I do. Yeah, I understand the argument, feeding the beast. You're having no effect on, on the beast whatsoever. Feed the beast and make better movies. That's what I suggest you do. Support stuff you, you, you like, but don't say, well, I don't see movies anymore. That's what I'm saying. Someone's asking if I've read their emails. I don't know if I've read your emails. I don't see, I can't, the, the text that's saying who it is, I can barely see. So you should just be aware of that. Does that make sense? Yes, I, and I agree with that about people's feelings, too. I'm not going to make a, a bio movie about Elon Musk because that's not what I'm interested in. I got about five film projects I want to do. So if, if someone's saying they've never had conservatives push me to shun other cultures, I'm not sure. Are you talking about world cultures? Or I'm talking about culture in general. Conservatives have not embraced arts. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I am blind. That's a problem. And look, well, can I complain about something else before I go and have breakfast? I really hate this new uh, design trend where they put light gray text on a white background. I hate it. As somebody who's blind, I like contrast. So if you look at the, uh, the comments going by, the comments are in a darker text. The names of the people making them are in a smaller text that is also light gray. You see that? That's why I can't read any of those. So when my friend Christina goes by, I recognize her picture. Uh, and so I can, I, you'll notice that I spot Christina when she goes by. And it's just because I recognize her picture. With everybody else, it's impossible for me to see. So I'm just looking at comments. What I'm investigating right now, I got a bunch of things on my plate. What do you want to know? I'm, I'm reporting on some of the people behind the Women's March. That's coming out. I'm going to talk about the dude in uh, uh, the, the FedEx driver that stopped the flag burning. I got a story coming out very quickly. I got to put up on that. Um, well, it's hard for you to watch an actor for if you hate what you are, but why don't you try this? Put yourself in their position. It's probably hard for them that you're a fan. So there you go. You're getting, you're getting, you're getting personal about it. Does that make sense? Don't get personal about it. Uh, do I ever sensationalize anything I write to make it hurt a little more? Kind of. Um, I don't know if sensationalize is the right word. Sometimes you have to give something an extra oomph and make it not boring. Does that make sense? So that's a good idea. There's a lot more. I covered the stuff of the refugees at the beginning. Go back and cover that. I'm about to end this sucker. So let me do it with the pimpage. So first off, if you've not retweeted this, do me a favor, retweet this. There's a lot of interesting stuff at the beginning. When we shut this down in a, in a minute or so, people are going to want to see it who haven't seen it. So if you could retweet it, and I see a flurry of retweets, I would appreciate that. Second, citizenjournalismschool.com. I sure had to be a good journalist. That's what I do. Citizenjournalismschool.com, special offer right now for guinea pigs. I made a video for you. It's 10 minutes long. Go to citizenjournalismschool.com. Go watch it. Also, if you haven't signed up for my completely free newsletter, The Straining and Report, do that. Okay? Anyway, love you guys. Talk to you later. I'll probably see you later. Something's going to make me mad. Then I'll be back in Periscope. Bye, guys.